Hey there, Nate here with the Volunteer Tech Vlog on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. This will be a tutorial video for the Middle Atlantic uh, PDS 615R. So just a little tutorial uh, for this uh, six-step power sequencer right here. And um, it is a programmable uh, power sequencer uh, due to the uh, the dip switches which uh, you know if you can if you can see over here uh, we've got um, got some different um, some graphics here on the back that show these different dip switches and uh, different configurations so you can actually program this uh, to to uh, operate at a 0.75 interval between um, outlets uh, a one and a half second interval, a 2.25 second interval, or a seven second interval. So it's programmable in those uh, three time uh, settings are based on your needs and, and the equipment that you have and, and the amount of time that you want to pass uh, between each step in the sequencer. So why a sequencer? Why would you pick a sequencer? Well, um, that's a good question. So. So the reason is so that you can uh, actually uh, program uh, time delay between various devices in your system. Now um, that may sound vague still if you're not if you're not familiar with what a power sequencer is. It's kind of like a fancy power distribution unit or power strip. Uh, you might be familiar with that that term. But um, you know the biggest example in a, in a live sound application is that you've got the uh, the power amps and you've got the front of house console and signal processing. Um, and what happens when you turn the system on or off uh, in the wrong order? Well, you can get loud pops and loud thumps and spikes of energy getting amplified through your system, which, which th th you know, it doesn't sound good. You know, it's like uh, if you've got, um, you know, maybe you've got a, a, a guitar player that uh, uh, before the channel is muted, he plugs in and you, you'll hear this loud pop as he plugs that quarter inch in if the channel's open and it's not muted. Or uh, maybe you've got a microphone, a condenser microphone that uses phantom power. Uh, maybe maybe uh, you've experienced that before where uh, the channel is wide open, it's not muted, and somebody uh, unexpectedly plugs in that microphone or unplugs that microphone it's going to make a loud pop. You know, same thing happens when you turn your system on or off. Basically, what you're hearing is a little spike of energy that's getting pushed through the electronics, and that spike of energy makes it into the audio path and uh, is amplified uh, through the amplifiers if they're on, and uh, it comes out of the speakers. So. You want to avoid that by using the simple rule of thumb, which is uh, amps on last, amps off first. So when you go to turn the system, when you go to turn your system on, you want to make sure the amps go on last, so you don't amplify any of those spikes that can come through the system. And then when you go to turn the system off, you want to turn the amps off first, so that they don't amplify um, other devices going on and off. Now, if you've been doing sound for a while. That's that comes pretty natural to you, but if if you've got like a volunteer team, um, and it's it's a little confusing, you can you can get a device like this from Middle Atlantic. Again, this is the PDS 615R, and uh, that's basically uh, the the short answer of, of why you would want to use a power sequencer. Okay, let's take a closer look at the front panel of this power sequencer. You can see right there. Uh, we've got this is this is the main on off button so this is this is the one that's like the hard off if you turn this thing off it's not getting power you know it's not plugged in right now but it's got this little bar over it because this is not like your normal operating uh, this is not the system on system off sequence on sequence off that's like the master on off which should be left uh, in one state and then over here zoom in right over here we've got our our dip switches right there so if you've got like a little tweaker you can this is how you program it to do different things um, you can mess with these dip switches to change the interval and to change the the identification so you just take like a little little 
little screwdriver like this right here and uh, you can you can program it uh, next we've got this indicator light here now that's interesting because that's gonna that's gonna light up and blink when the thing is in the process of sequencing so when you when you hit the uh, the other button which I haven't showed you yet down at the other end that green lights gonna come on that's gonna tell you that this thing's thinking it's working something is going on now here we go we've, we've start, starting to see our uh, our sequence LEDs here which 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 light up in order so you know as the first thing comes on this will light up and we'll move to two and three and etc 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 and uh, last if I can uh, get this thing over here that's the system on off so this is the actual switch that you'd use to you know turn the system off or turn the system on and uh, the nice thing about it is once it's programmed that's all you gotta do come over here hit this button you don't have to you don't have to think about uh, do I turn the amps on first or do I turn the amps off last or whatever and it, you know it can uh, it can help simplify things so okay let's uh, let's flip it around and take a look at the back now so that was the front back of this thing uh, let's see we've got uh, our six sequenced outlets so each one of those so number six corresponds with the LED we just saw in the front and then five three two one kind of looking at this thing backwards so those are our um, those are our power sequenced outlets there and then what do we have over here so this is something a little different this is this is what makes this thing unique is that we've got this um, remote uh, up down so we can, we can actually pop that piece of glass off and what you've got here is just some screw terminals and basically you can just take a three conductor cable and if you wanted to wire two of these units together this is how you do it you would wire uh, the remote up calm and down uh, in parallel to a secondary unit and up would be uh, wired to the up of the second unit, com to the com of the second unit, and down to the down of the second unit. So you just just want to wire it right in parallel there, and um, then you've got if you want to, you know, send signal out a status to uh, to another system. You've got uh, two conductor terminal barrier strip right here where you can you can send a status uh, to uh, maybe a control system or, or something like that sort of indication light. Um, I won't be using this, but I do I do plan on using this because we got two of these so we can keep one of these uh, we got two of these units so we can keep one down in the amp closet and one up at front of house and we'll wire them together using this uh, this remote right here. And as I keep scrolling across here, we've got this last one here which says unswitched. What does unswitched mean? Unswitched means it's always on. So no matter what state the system is in, if you if you turn the sequence on or sequence off, this guy is going to stay on all the time. So why would I want that? Well, a number of reasons. So you might want something not switched, maybe a wireless router. Maybe you don't want Wi-Fi to go down. So you might have your wireless router plugged off of this, uh, plugged, energized from this port here. Uh, maybe an Ethernet switch. Maybe um, you know any any type of device. Maybe a light. That you want to be able to see, you know, what you're doing, or a fan, or something like that. But anything that computer that you don't want to be uh, turning on or off, you can do that right and uh, and plug it right there. So uh, last thing here is uh, if I can get this thing over a little bit more, so just like a grounding. If you want to do some uh, uh, some chassis uh, grounding here, you want to you want to make sure you you've got a good grounding scheme. Uh, depending on your system, you might use this, you might not use that, but um, uh, that's that's what this is for here, for uh, for safety ground there. And um, that will do it. Now let's take a look at the uh, the schematic. Okay, so we've got our schematic here, which is handily uh, handily is that a word? Handily printed right on the chassis of this device. So let's just take a look. Uh, 
here we go we'll just take a look at the whole thing real quick and now we'll zoom right in so we've got our remote control dry contact closure which would feed into the remote terminal block which is uh, how you link two of these things together and then um, right next to that you've got your system up down switch um, so the remote terminal block and the system up down switch both feed into the same control input there so that's how you can uh, control one remotely so then it goes from the control input now you've got your delay select and um, those dip switches we saw you can adjust those dip switches and change the delay to different time intervals uh, you've got your micro microcontroller LED output to the uh, the front panel there so you can see um, uh, which part of the sequence is, is happening at what time you got your status output, which goes to that other terminal block there, barrier strip, those little screw terminals on the back there. Um, and that's to, um, to to give a status output to uh, an external device of some sort. Uh, and then maybe a control processor. And then you've got uh, your sequence output, which comes over here to the power relay bank. So this is where the magic happens. These relays uh, open up. Uh, these outlets so they're either energized or they're not energized at different times uh, that's a physical thing that happens in there and then we've got that master uh, on off switch which uh, is the first thing I showed you there with that red one with the little protector bar or guard over it so uh, that's the master and uh, then we have our, our uh, non sequenced output so the non sequenced output that is always on you can see uh, is affected. So if the master's off, this thing, this this whole thing's off. So I guess it's it's unswitched. I guess I guess the technical, I guess I would say it's actually uh, unsequenced because technically it, it uh, well I guess it's it depends on which switch you're looking at. But uh, anyway, so if you did turn that thing off on the master on off switch, the unswitched outlet would go off. So just something to be aware of. And uh, now let's take a look at the programming. Okay, okay. Here are the uh, the first two uh, switches. So I guess I should start. So these are the dip switch settings, obviously. Uh, and the you'll notice the very first two have uh, have to do with the time interval or the delay between uh, uh, sequences. Now. Uh, just dip switches one and two there you can see when when one and two are both uh, you know flipped to the up position we've got a 0.75 second delay when one is down two is up we've got a uh, one and a half second delay when one is up and two is down we've got a 2.25 second delay and when one is down and two is down we've got a seven second delay so those are your four options for delay. Um, now, uh, what's this little note say here? This little note says, uh, sequence up, down, start delay. If two or three sequences are to be used, chained together. Okay, so that is um, all well and good if you've got one sequencer, but what if we've got multiple chained together? Okay, so here's sequencer one. You can see the up, the com, and the down uh, and let's see sequencer two up common down wired together in parallel and then you can have a third sequencer again uh, wired in parallel so everything's all wired together they're all jumped together um, now the next thing is how do you want this so sequencer one we want to be First on, last off. You can do uh, dip switch three would be down. Dip switch four would be up. So that would be sequencer one, first on, last off. So this would be the one you want at front of house. If you want that to come on first, you want it to go off last. So let's let's check that in real life. We want, uh, let, and let's say we want a, let's just say we want a 0.75 interval. So, so we want our interval to be 0.75, and we want it to be first on, last off. So it's going to be 
up, up, down, up. So remember that sequence. And what do we got here? Up, up, down, up. So, so it looks good. So that's, this is our, I could mess around with that if I wanted to. Turn that down. You can see how, let's see how this works there. Now, just so you can see, I do have to get in there. It's kind of tight. Oh, I accidentally turned them all up. But I want this to be up, up, down, up. Because that's my sequence for front of house. Front of house, there we go. Up, up, down, up. Now that's going to make sure this thing turns uh, first on, last off. This is going to be sequencer one at front of house, first on, last off. And it's going to be a 0.75 delay between each of the six steps. And if we've got two of them wired together, that's actually going to be 12 steps. There's my nice little sticker there, so I know that this is the uh, the one that's programmed for uh, for front of house. Okay, now here is uh, power sequencer number two, which is going to be in the amp closet. I want this to be second on, second off. So I want this to be uh, three will be up and four will be down. So the interval will be the same. I want to keep it at uh, 0.75, so, so uh, one and two will be up up so we up up and then it will be uh, up down if I come down here you can see I've got up 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 down so this is the amp closet one okay now let's say we want to wire these two together and uh, you know I've got my my front of house uh, uh, sequencer up here and my amp closet sequencer down here. I've made note of that. I've got my uh, handy dandy little, uh, little little note here so I can I can tell what's what. I mean, you can't see that because it's all washed out. It says front of house on it. Anyway, uh, so how do you wire these together? So the remote is right here. Pop these little plastic caps off, and it's pretty pretty easy to chain them together. Now this is just like a USB cable that had broken, and I just you know, lopped off the ends of it, and I've got a USB, in case you didn't know, has four conductors in it. So I'm not using the green, I'm just going to use the uh, the black, uh, and I'll make, uh, I'll use the black, the white, and the red, and I'll make, uh, you know, let's say I'll make, I'll make red up, I'll make com be white, and I'll make black be down. And so uh, all, all you would do here is just loosen up these screws. And it's pretty boring, but uh, you just loosen up the screws and you know stick these in here like so. Line it up nice, and then crank the screws, crank the screws down. And you do the same on the uh, on the other side, and you again ma match everything up. So up, if you if you said up was going to be red and calm was going to be. Uh, uh, white and down was going to be black. You you want to just make sure you, you match those those same ones down here and crank those screws. And that's all there is to it. You just wire them them two together, and uh, it, the magic will happen. Now I've already tested it out with this. What I really want to do is test it out with some. Maybe you don't have. Um, so what cable should you use? So you could use audio cable, any three conductor cable, uh, like a balanced audio cable, like an XLR, that would work. Um, but what I've got on hand, already pulled, is some CAT cable. So I'm going to test it out with some, some, some CAT5 here. And what I've done is I've, I've twisted together the, um, the orange and the white orange, the green, the white green, and the blue, the white white and blue on both ends to kind of uh, beef up my conductors a little bit there. But yeah, I probably didn't need to do that, but maybe for long runs it, it might it might help. I'm not really sure what gauge uh, you, you really want to have for this over what distance, but um, there is some, some science behind it. But uh, for the most part, I don't think you're going to need... Uh, some any super heavy gauge, but uh, I guess you could also use speaker cable if you if you really wanted to. You just have to use uh, a pair, and then um, you know use use another another uh, conductor or another speaker cable for the third one. So you might be able to get away with like two speaker cables linked between these two. So I'm gonna wire this up and see how it looks. 
All right, I've got this thing all wired up with some uh, some spare Cat5 I had kicking around here. So we've got our, our blue connected to the up, green connected to the com, and orange connected to the down on unit one. And then on unit two, down at the amp closet, we'd have uh, blue again connected to up, green to com, orange to the down. So there we go. And then the brown pair I didn't use, so I just kind of wrapped it around to keep it out of the way. This is not a, a finish, a, f a final wiring job. This is just kind of a test lab situation, but you, you probably want to use heat shrink or something to keep, uh, keep this clean and make sure this conductor didn't accidentally like go into like one of these sockets. Whoops, that'd be a big mistake. Wouldn't want to do that. So heat shrink would be good. Good use to keep this snipped down and wrapped out of the way at least. So anyway, that's that's pretty simple. That's how you wire these two together. So I've, now I've got them programmed, and I've got them uh, wired together. Uh, let's fire them up and see what happens. Okay, so if everything was programmed and wired correctly, what we should have is we should have the front of house, got my little sticky note here, front of house one, uh, turn on first, and go through all six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, with 0.75 seconds between, and then jump down to the amp closet, theoretically the amp closet, which would go to, uh, continue the sequence, uh, it, to, to, to steps 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the first thing we'll do is we will make sure the master is on. So we'll energize that one. We'll energize that one. And uh, we see a little, little green indicator light coming on on both of those. So we've got the green light that's on. And now uh, let me see if I, if I make this a little darker might be able to see see that light a little bit better. Um, so now I will go for the sequence and see what happens. All right, that seemed to work. I think it it waited about uh, 0.75 seconds between. It went through. The whole front of house sequence, then it jumped down and went through the whole um, the whole amp closet sequence there. And while that was happening, we saw the green indicator lights blinking. So now I will I will hit that same button again. Notice I'm hitting the same one, the the, the button up at front of house for sequence on off, and I hit sequence off. It should do the exact opposite. This bottom row should turn off, and then the top row should turn off. Let's try that. Yep, we got our blinking lights here saying something's thinking. There we go. All right, so that turned on and off from um, from front of house. Now let's try to turn it on and off from the amp closet. Let's say we're down there, and. Uh, Let's watch these these indicator lights. See if the camera picks up. They're blinking, because uh, I can see it here with my eye. I'm just wondering if the camera's picking that up. Once you turn this thing, once you once you initiate this the sequence, the this power this green LED here blinks, to let you know that the thing's thinking. Well, let's try it from the amp closet switch now. Should do the same order. Yep. So it jumped back up to front of house. Great. So no matter no matter where you are, whether you're at front of house or down in the amp closet, when you hit this button, it's going to turn the system on and off in the same sequence every single time, which makes things very simple for volunteers, which is why I really like this product from Mid-Atlantic. This is the uh, the PDS615R. Turn it off one last time.